Hi, Art here with tinysiphouse.blogspot. Today, what do the words gluten and formaldehyde have in common? Not a lot. Mostly misunderstanding and a lot of anxiety. Most people today get their news from the headlines and don't bother to read the article. So both of those subjects can stir a lot of misconception and misinformation. So let's talk about formaldehyde because that's a common topic in tiny house structures. Basically, formaldehyde is a naturally occurring uh, compound. It's made of oxygen, carbon, and two hydrogen atoms. It occurs in nature because it's a metabolic process of most living things, plants and animals. In nature, it's a present at a, at a ratio of a, a value of about 0 0.003 parts per million. When it, when it exceeds 0.100 parts per million, that's when most people will start to experience some short-term side effects burning eyes, runny nose, maybe some respiratory problems. We can in introduce it into our environment through a lot of consumer products. It's used in glues, paper coatings, fabrics, disinfectants. We can also introduce it by combustion, burning cigarettes, a really common <laughs> area, uh, wood, and natural gas. So in a small environment, such as the tiny house, it's critical we have such a small, tight space to keep your air as clean as possible. Um, the long-term effects of, uh, of um, formaldehyde are not well known yet. We, there's not been any really long-term studies. There's, there's uh, indications that it can lead to cancer. But in general, anything other than clean, fresh air is not gonna be healthy for you. So we wanna keep the levels as low as we can or eliminate them altogether. Um, so, some of the misconceptions. Everybody knows about plywood that's the headlines plywood contains formaldehyde well the glues that they used to use in, in plywood were called what's called urea formaldehyde and those uh, off gassed quite readily and there were high levels of formaldehyde when those glues were used I think most or if not all of those glues have been eliminated and there's a new formaldehyde used in glues that is a lot more stable less likely to off gas so I built my house with SIP panels, which uses a lot of OSB plywood. A lot of people have that question of, well, what about formaldehyde? And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm curious as well. I did my own research when I was building my house, and I was comfortable with what I found that it was not going to be a risk. But uh, in, in, in again, some of the realities of formaldehyde is all wood emits some formaldehyde. So I don't know if you can find a product out there that does not. But I, I had no hard data on how, how much my house contained or if it contained any. So I decided to do a test. There's formaldehyde test kits out there. I purchased one from a company called Sylvain. This kit sells for $89.95 online. And what it contains is a small badge that you display in your house for up to, t for, they recommend 24 hours. And it collects a small sample of the air in your environment. You ship it back to them and they will analyze it and send you a report. So what you get in this little kit is, uh, first of all, a chain of custody. You can, it's official from a lab, to go to a lab. There's a couple of bags to seal it up and a self-addressed postage paid envelope. Now the little badge has been hanging right here. I'm gonna unclip it now. It's been in my house now for a little over 24 hours and it's just a little, some type of air collecting device. You could wear it on your on your body if you were in a work environment or hang it in your house. Once you're done, once it's been 24 hours, you seal it up in these little plastic bags, mail it back, and they will send you the results. So I'm gonna mail this off today. They say they can get them back to you if then, uh, through email in about a week, and I will let you know what I find. All right, I'm back. That didn't take long, not for you anyway. For me, it took 10 calendar days waiting for this test. So the formaldehyde levels in my house registered at 0 0.025 parts per million. So to put that in perspective, outdoor air measures between 0 0.0015 and 0 0.047 parts per million, depending on the area that you live in. Urban areas tend to have a little higher formaldehyde due to uh, automobiles and other industrial processes in the, in the urban areas. All of those levels are considered safe for long-term exposure. Obviously, you want the least amount you can get. So my house 
measures no different than what I would probably get if I had to put the test strip outside. And I tried to conduct a worst case scenario test. It was in the 90s during the day when I tested my house and the humidity was 94%. I sealed it up, turned the air conditioner off, and left for 24 hours. So if you have any doubts about your, your house, you can always test it. I still think the best method is to do your homework before you build it and not introduce the formaldehyde into it in the first place. But my house was built with SIP panels, a lot of OSB or oriented strand board, uh, and it does not seem to in off gas into, into the environment. So there you go. I hope this helps you. If you have any questions, there's tons of more information out there on formaldehyde, its sources, and how to produce a healthy environment to live in. So good luck with your build.